Okay, guys, welcome back. Big critical information system. Okay, so I've had so many questions, so many of my students are struggling with MapBook because of GIS. But you need to remember, it forms a very small com component of your mark, only like 10 to 15 marks in your final exam. And that equals the equivalent to almost 10%. Yes, it can be a lot, but it's so simple. And once you understand the concepts behind it, it will make your life so much simpler. But let's just get straight to it. And I want to ask you to follow this because very importantly as a definition, I'm going to explain this to you. And please make notes as much as you can while we discuss GIS. Now, if you look at GIS, what is it? It consists of computers that consist of hardware and software. And we use different methods with this computer methods with the hardware and software. So what do we do with the information that we do? We manage it, the data that we collect, right? We capture it, we manage it, and we file it. And what we do is we specifically use this set of information for the needs that we need to do. So what do we do? We capture, manage, analyze, and display the data. Now, very importantly, and this is a very popular examination question, is regarding spatial data is geographical is geographical objects and then we talk about non-spatial data which I'll explain in detail a little bit later but you're going to know this term because it's being asked in all the exam questions known as attribute data. Okay. Now, very importantly, the most important thing that we need to know, why do we use GIS? Why do we use it? It's to plan and to dissolve problems. That's what you do. Okay. I'm going to quickly tell you a beautiful story before I continue with all these concepts. Now, if you look at a company that used GIS very successfully, in the past 20 odd years, especially when they, especially when they moved the companies to, it became fra franchises for different, became franchises in different continents, is McDonald's. Now you at home, hopefully you will agree with me that if you look at the Steers Burger, for instance, if you look at Steers Burger, if even Wimpy Burgers, are much better burgers than the McDonald's burger. Am I correct? I hope so. I certainly choose these burgers before I choose a McDonald's burger. But if we look at the company itself as an asset, McDonald's is a billion, billion, billion dollar industry. It's absolutely massive. It's by far the most successful food chain restaurant in the world. Okay, Steers, Wimpy combined can't even get close to McDonald's. I don't think even we find Steers and Wimpy's all over the world in different continents. Now, my question to you is, how did you think McDonald's became so successful. What did they do to become so successful in selling hamburgers? Because once I said again, they're definitely not selling the best hamburgers around. For instance, Rock and Mama's, once again, another example, much better hamburgers. But what did McDonald's do to become so successful? They actually used GIS. And what they've done was, if you look at it, let's just write it down there, is to solve planning and manage problems. Okay. It's to plan and it's to solve. Now let's go back to my explanation, like I said to you. So McDonald's is probably one of the first franchises using this GIS concept, you know, the data, the software, the hardware, all the components of GIS. 
to make their business model even more successful. Now, I want you to imagine this. Imagine if you live in urban areas like Johannesburg, Pretoria, uh, even in small central place towns like Pochestroom, for example, or Stellenbosch, or Ceres, or these places. I don't even know if they do have a McDonald's. But I want you to imagine this quickly. Where do you find a McDonald's restaurant? Now, first of all, so what McDonald's did, they look at the following. They need spatial data. First of all, they need to find land that's available. And in this land, they need to go and have a look at the site of it. Is there going to be enough water? Is it, for instance, is the situation good? The site's good. Is there going to be enough water? Is there sewage, for example? Is, what's the gradient? Is it going to be a flat area? Is it a decent area to go and build? if you look at the topography of it. Okay. So that's one of the aspects I need to go and look at. And then the second aspect that McDonald's looked at, okay, who's buying McDonald's? Usually families, am I correct? Okay. So now if they've looked at spatial data and they look at attribute data, they want to see, if you look at spatial data, let look for instance, okay, the physical land. Okay. Attribute data, then they look at it. We, they look at roads. Okay, national routes, and they find themselves, where's the busiest intersections? Okay, because big transport needs to be, access to McDonald's is quite important for them. So where is busy intersections? So obviously, instead of just buying, building a McDonald's beside a freestanding road, why not let's build it at an intersection? Because now we've got two roads crossing, so it means our consumers are going to increase, am I correct? And thirdly, what did McDonald's do? Very clever. They go and look at shopping centers. So they go and look, they went and look for land that's available, that's available, readily available, that's close to intersection, busy streets, close to shopping centers, and lastly, probably the most important one, because I know all of you love it, close to schools. Now what I want you to do is quickly think about it. Right? If you can imagine where is McDonald's all over South Africa, I can guarantee you it's going to be at a busy intersection, it's close to a shopping center, and it's going to be close to a school. And all of a sudden, you have a recipe to make lots of money. Not because you're making the best burgers, but because of the location. So what did GIS do for McDonald's? Going back to it. It solved, they planned with it, and what was their problem? To make more, they didn't make enough money, they want to make more money. So in this case, they solved it by using GIS, to find the exact location. And they've got no more problems because they've got so much consumers. Okay, but we're going to delve a little bit. That's just an example I can give you. Okay, now if you continue, if you just look, let's just make a mind map. I just want to extend my page. Okay, we have GIS, and like I've mentioned, we have hardware. And what's hardware? I'm going to give you an example. It's like the computer that you use, it's the mouse, okay, the printer, scanner. Okay, we have methods. What methods do we use to? to collect the information. Okay, GIS, GIS designs. What, there's so many different methods that they use. Okay, we use people. Because what do these people do? They collect the data. Okay. Data captures. Analyst. And believe it or not, you can go and study GIS as a subject at university, at tertiary education places. Okay, so you can be a GIS analyst. You can be a town and city planner. Okay, let's go and look at the components again. What data do these analysts use, these people use to collect the information? They use maps. That's the reason why it's integrated with map work. They use aerial photographs. Okay. 
They use satellite images. We're going to discuss that one now. And administrative records. Excuse my, let me just wipe the screen. Administrative records. For instance, paperwork. And last but not least, we look to that software. Okay, so what is that for instance? That is apps, okay, that we use, such as ArcView. So all of this together, Great Tiles, basically forms GIS. Okay, so we're using computer systems, we're using the hardware, the actual computer, for instance, the mouse, the printer, the scanner, software for apps that's been created to collect information. We use different methods, we use people that study or capture the data, okay? Analysts, people with tertiary education degrees to get that information. The data can be from McDonald's. What's the first thing that they do, did? They go and look at aerial photo, maybe to find busy intersections, to see if there's land available to buy, okay? They look at topographical maps to go and see and look at the altitude, look at the contour lines. Is it a suitable place to buy? Is there enough water resource? Almost like sites, we can go and have a look at that. They looked at satellite images, okay? Clear images, and we're going to discuss it. We're going to look at the pixel quality of that. And we're going to look at records, administrative records. Is it, for instance, for them safe? And if we, they can even go further, go, they can go and look at the residential areas. Is it low, middle, or high income, income residential areas? Look at the socioeconomic impacts, right? Is it viable for them to go and open a McDonald's in a very poor area? Probably not. Okay. So they distinctively need to go and look at areas for middle income and high income areas and to go and find that land. Okay. So if we quickly look at these components that we're going to discuss, let's go back to my screen. And we look at them, we look at remote sensing, and I've mentioned that to you. And this question keeps on popping up in the final exam. What is remote sensing? I'm just going to write it out here for you. Remote sensing is collecting of information from a distance. No, sorry. Collecting of information about the Earth's surface from a distance okay, without being in contact with it. Okay, so if you look at remote sensing, it's the collection of information about the Earth's surface from a distance without being in contact with the Earth itself. And how do we do that? Set images. And when we look at these images, we use different types. Okay, so most of the time, believe it or not, Great Tars, Back in the day, we used aeroplanes to take photographs of the surface of the Earth. Okay, but because of technology, it's so far advanced that remote sensing takes place from satellites. Okay, we collect images, photographs taken from satellites about the Earth's surface instead of using planes and that. So what is remote sensing? If you look at this definition, it's the collection of information about the surface from a distance without being in contact with it. Now, when we look at this information that's been given to us, you know, what, what information do we collect? Okay, what do we collect from this remote sensing? And the first that we collect is known as spatial 
objects. Now, spatial objects can be anything. Okay, it can be a farm state, isolated farm state. It can be a waterfall. It can be a wind pump. It can even be a national route. Okay, all these references that you see on the maps can be spatial object as uh, spatial objects. But keep in mind, think about it. The shapes can be different. And when we look at it, let's just quickly have a look at it. When we look at spatial objects. For instance, I'm going to give you an isolated farmstead is known as a building. I can use a river as an example. Right, a permanent river, for instance, like the Vol River. Apologies, just want to go move, move back, open the screen. Or we can use a cultivated land. Okay, where crops are being farmed. Now, if you look at these spatial objects, how do they look from our remote sensing? How do we identify them spatially? Okay, and this is how we identify them. The building, the isolated farmstead, will be a point on the map. Okay, now the river will be in the shape of a line. Am I correct? And the cultivated area, land, will be an area also known as a node, arc, polygon. Okay, now if you think of the spatial objects on a map, let's assume this is my 1 to 50,000 map. Okay, how will the isolated form set be represented? By a point. How would the river be represented? By a land. And the cultivated area will be represented, cultivated land will be represented by area, okay, as you can see over there. Okay.